live in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. If I live in the spirit and walk in the spirit, I won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Because I live from this dimension, this dimension does not dictate my decision. When I live in the spirit and I crucify the desires of that thing, I can bridge the glory here into the dimension of God. And I can manifest heaven around me because heaven's inside of me. So we are three dimensional beings. We have a spirit, soul, body, and each have a body in that realm. So when witches and people who do witchcraft, they're leaving their body to do what they call astral projection. They're using a soul body. Now here's the problem with a soul body, which I've taught you guys. A soul body has something called a silver cord. So when they travel with it, they're actually still attached to their body. So they have limited travel. Sons of God have no limits. So I want to teach you about the heavens and the earth. Maybe I'm going to start very foundational and then I'm going to go deeper. Amen. All right. So let's go to Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Say heavens. In the beginning, God did what? How many? How many heavens? Amen. So God didn't just create the heaven. He created the what? Heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Say amen. And it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. All right. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament. Say firmament. In the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above. And the firmament and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. So God called the firmament heaven. So there was a heaven, say the first heaven. So above the firmament of the earth, it's the first heaven, which is the atmospheric heaven, which includes the air and the sky and the galaxies and the stars. So this first heaven dimension is everything that is above the earth that then crosses to the sky, the air, and then crosses past that into the universe which is the stars, the galaxies, etc. That's the first heaven, which the first heaven is still visible as a natural realm. So if we go to the moon, we're still in the first heaven. We've crossed from the earth and we've ascended to the first heaven. When you get in a plane, you're flying on the first heaven. So that's why they say, look to the heavens, which is just the sky. Hallelujah. But then let's talk about the second heaven. Who wants to hear about that one? Before I talk about a second heaven, let me show you that there's more than one heaven. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 12, 2. And he says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows such a one was caught up to the, where was he taken? To the third heaven. And if you go on reading, he talks about he saw mysteries. He saw the revelations of God. He saw God himself when he was in the third heaven. Say the third heaven. So the third heaven is the highest dimension. But let's go down to the second heaven. Where is the second heaven? Let's go to Ephesians 6, 12. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Say that's people. So you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But what do you fight against? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness. Where? Where are these people? Where are these beings? So what are these heavenly places? Because we know that God sits in the heavens. So what is this heavenly place where these other entities that we are at war against dwell? That is the second heaven. Say the second heaven. So the second heaven is the spiritual realm, which is interlaid with the natural realm. So watch this. I'm here in the natural. But as I'm right here, there's also a spiritual here. I'm here physically, but I'm also here spiritually. So there's a physical here and a spiritual here. Both are at the same place at the same time, yet one is visible, one's invisible. So when we're in this room and we're lifting our hands and we're feeling the presence of God, what is that? You're in a natural room with a spiritual atmosphere surrounding you and moving. So we have a simple understanding that I can be somewhere physically and spiritually at the same time. You could be in your bedroom and suddenly a entity appears in your bedroom or you can feel the entity if you have not seen yet 
and you can tell there's something's in my room. Something's looking at me. You ever say something like that? Okay, what is that something? That something is a thing. It's an entity. It's a being. Whether it be an angel of God, one of the beings and the creatures of God, because God created more than just angels, just so you know. It could be one of God's creations, one of his beings, or it could be a demon. And it could be one of these beings, spiritual hosts of wickedness who are in the spiritual places, heavenly places. Now, the earth has multiple places as well, right? So if I know that a physical place is interlaid with a spiritual place, there's some mystery there, isn't there? So why is it that I cannot see into the spirit realm just like I can see into the natural realm? You ever ask that question? Like I see you physically, but why can't I see your spirit? What is causing me not to see what is here that is invisible? Why is it that I can't see the invisible? Why is it invisible to me? So we know that Gehazi could only see the natural until the servant, the, the prophet, opened his eyes and took the veils off, okay? And I'm going to come back to the veil in just a moment, okay? So now, we know now that there's a, a physical realm and a spirit realm that is in the same place. The same field he saw natural army, his eyes were unveiled and he saw a spiritual army in the same place where the natural army was. Now, I could talk to you about the different dimensions of the spirit realm and, and I will teach this stuff more as we go and we grow, amen? But the physics in the spirit realm are very different than the physics of the natural realm. So when you read it, it don't even make sense how they were standing here near a tent, but there were fleets of angels all around them. There was not enough space in the natural realm to occupy sp the matter, space, time, and matter. So the physics of that dimension are not the same physics of this dimension. That's why Jesus, when he was able to be a conduit of another dimension, he defied the laws of physics. He walked on water. He multiplied food. Because in that dimension, the physics are not the same as this one. Train your spirit, man. You're so carnally minded because you live in the natural realm. So you only live by what you see. You only taste and see by the natural dimension. But I taste and see that the Lord is good. I eat him. I drink him. I exercise my spirit with him. So in the spirit realm, if you saw my spirit man, you'd be like, Woo, who that? Is my spirit man looking crazy? Praise the Lord. Because you know you are three beings in one body. You have a natural body. You have a soul body. And then you have a spirit body. You who have been born again are spirit. He who is born of spirit is spirit. So you are spirit now. So you have three bodies that you have to take care of. You have your spirit body, which is born of God, made just, made perfect by the spirit of the living God, but has to be matured and trained and built up and edified. Then you have a soul body, which is your mind, emotions, and your will, which the soul body is how you bridge the spirit to the natural. Soul body. The spirit is born of God. It's who I really am. I have a soul that lives inside of this body and the soul is how I make decisions that control the body. So what do I need to do? Live in the spirit, walk in the spirit. If I live in the spirit and walk in the spirit, I won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Because I live from this dimension, this dimension does not dictate my decisions. When I live in the spirit and I crucify the desires of that thing, I can bridge the glory here into the dimensions out of me. And I can manifest heaven around me because heaven's inside of me. So we are three dimensional beings. We have a spirit, soul, body, and each have a body in that realm. So when witches and people who do witchcraft, they're leaving their body to do what they call astral projection. They're using a soul body. Now here's the problem with a soul body, which I've taught you guys. A soul body has something called a silver cord. So when they travel with it, they're actually still attached to their body. So they have limited travel. Sons of God have no limits. Because when we travel from the spirit, we don't have a cord that, ent that entangles us. Or no soldier in the kingdom of God entangles himself with the things of this world. Knowing this, therefore, that you are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us throw off every weight of sin that so easily besets us. Throw off the weights of the flesh so you can be unlimited in your spirit. What limits your spirit, man, is all the junk you've allowed in your body and your soul. 
in your mind, your emotions, your will, because the mind, emotions, and will will determine what's practiced and what's released through your body. So live in your spirit, not your soul or your body. The third heaven is the dwelling place of God. So we know there are three dimensions. So what was he doing in Revelations 4? After these things, I looked. Where were you looking, John? I looked and behold, the door was standing open in heaven. So he learned how when he prays to start looking for stuff. Jesus said, watch and pray so you do not enter into temptation. Say, watch and pray. So when you're here and you're praying, you ought to be watching too. Last week, many of you began to go into visions. And a brother, this brother shared, he said, I, I was here and I saw a portal open and a river come into the room. And as it began to rise, the river became fire. How many of you were here when he said that? Right after he declared what he saw, it manifested in the room. Because that's how it works. You see, then you speak into existence that which you've seen. Because the Spirit in Genesis chapter 1 followed after the Word was spoken. It was all full of void and darkness. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. So the Spirit was just waiting for a word to be spoken. But the Father had to see. Let me help you. The, the Word had to see. Jesus is the Word, right? So the Word, Yeshua, in Genesis 1-3, had to see the will of the Father. When He saw the will of the Father, the Word said, let there be. Yeshua said, let there be. And there was light. Jesus said, I don't say anything until I hear my father say it i don't do anything until i see my father do it so when god said that verb said is a person named jesus that verb said is a person because jesus is the word so a verb said is actually a person named jesus so jesus through him all things were made and by him all things were made. And he, the word, became flesh and dwelt among us. So, uh, don't you guys love hearing about God? Man, I'm tired of preaching about your problems, y'all. Stop giving me problem preaching. No, the Lord's going to see you through. He's going to break you in. He's going to... Soul preaching. Feeding the soul. Motivation for two days. No revelation to break chains. The revelation of God will deliver you. The revelation of God will make that devil look stupid. But preachers are called to be revelators of the mysteries of God. They're not called to come and just cuddle everyone into their issue. They're called to get you out of it. Come on, man. You're bigger than that. You know who your God is? If you don't know who your God is, let me revelate a little and show you who he is. Let me take the veils off your eyes. After these things I looked, his eyes were in the right place. And behold, the door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me and said, come up here and I will show you things which must take place. And what happened after that? Immediately I was in the, immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne. So we know that he was taken to the highest heaven and he was in the spirit. So say when you're in the spirit, you're in the third heaven. So the second heaven operates from the soul dimension. Let me help you. Where are demons, principalities, powers, spiritual hosts of wickedness? Where are they? In what heaven? First, second, or third? Second. Where does your soul operate out of? So when the enemy attacks you, how does he attack you? Through the second heaven, which is the soul. So what are the attacks you get? Where do they attack? Because your soul is your what? Your mind? your emotions, which then lead to the act of your will. That's how it works. Your emotions will determine the decisions you make. So first he tries to plant in the mind, influence the emotions to then control the, the decision-making part because he can't even violate that. God doesn't violate your will. Satan can't violate it, though he tries his best and he's very good at it. Intrusive a thief, a robber. And what he'll do is, if he can't get you to do something, you know what he'll do? He'll get into someone else's mind, control someone else's emotions, make them make a decision to attack you. So you wrestle not against flesh and blood. He'll use flesh and blood 
but that's not your enemy. So how does your enemy work? He influences the thoughts, plants them, manipulates the emotion. And then once you've got the emotions and the mind in agreement, the will will automatically act out. So you have a decision, say decision. Now notice from the beginning, I said you got a choice, don't, didn't I? Because in this room right now, we're in the natural realm, we're in the soul realm, and we've opened up the spirit realm. There's three dimensions in the room right now. There's three realms operating in one place. What you see me with your natural eyes, your soul, which can be influenced right now, and then your spirit man, which is being edified by the teacher. But your mind has to be renewed. So what I'm doing is with my words, I'm taking things from my spirit, agreeing it with my soul, verbalizing it with my mouth, which then is going into your ears, which is then changing the way you think, which then changes the emotions. Hopefully you agree, so then it determines your will, and then the Spirit of God says, yield your will to me. And once your will is yielded to the teaching and the words of life and the Spirit of God, boom, miracles break out. The kingdom of heaven invades. So when you pray, pray therefore this way. Say this way. Our Father who is, where is he? Hallowed be thy name. And then what's your declaration? Your kingdom come, your will be done where? On earth as it is in heaven. Meaning I am the mediator, I am the one in the middle that the moment that my soul agrees with that realm, with that reality, I will verbalize your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Now by my will, I call for his will and it comes on earth as it is in heaven because within you is the kingdom of but the only way to get it out is through the soul the soul has to agree